I have long looked at Japanese furniture as the pinnacle of simplicity and well-executed design, not only from a visual standpoint, but from a structural standpoint as well. I based a lot of my past designs on that very idea, and with this project, I decided to take a risk and really lean into it, kind of like this bench wheel. Well, hopefully. I'm using hard maple to make this piece because it's light in color but heavy in weight, and I want gravity to be my friend with this design, unlike my joiner, which left me a bit of hand tool cleanup work to do. With all my boards milled down to their final thickness, like Highlander 3, I cut them to their final dimension. Since these were some wide timber slices, I used a jigsaw to break them down. Doing it this way also lets me avoid any spring in the lumber. A consistent feed rate is important when making long rip cuts to avoid burning. And since maple burns as quickly as grandma's turkey, be sure to keep things moving. With the side beams cut down, I moved on to the slats that make up the seat, backrest, and upper shelf. Now I designed this piece with equally sized slats for the seat and shelf, but I couldn't fit them all on one board. So I had to move the fence, which is something I don't normally do, because getting the fence right back to that position again can be kind of a pain. But the rip flip from woodpeckers allows me to return directly to my previous spot, which is super handy. So with the fence reset, I ripped the rest of the boards. So from there it was on to getting things the final length. So I cut a clean edge onto all my boards, then used a marking knife to mark out the cut placement. I gotta say, I'm loving this crosscut sled we made a few weeks ago. The larger size really comes in handy. Let me know if you've made the switch yet down in the comments. Since all the remaining slat sizes are the same, I set up a stop block just off the edge of my sled and cut them to their final length. The last pieces I need to trim down were the end caps that hold all the slats. These will get cut down to their final shape here in a minute. As with all my projects, plans for this one are available in the description. But this time you can add MDF templates to your order for a small fee. I'll be adding this feature to all my plans that use templates so you don't have to make your own. Unless of course you want to, so check them out. And finally, I could trim down the end caps for the backrest. All right, so in the last video, I built the shop table for my CNC. So next I put it to work cutting out the templates for the end caps. And unlike the state of our current supply chain, it moved along quickly. From there, I trimmed down the edge of the end cap to their final width before using those freshly cut templates to set up the table saw sled as I've covered in past videos. But if you're enjoying this one, you should subscribe. This way you'll get notified when new project videos go live, plus I publish new builds about every two weeks. So subscribe so you don't miss them. And thank you to all my subscribers for your support. You guys are awesome. And as a side note, if you don't feel comfortable making these cuts while holding the work pieces, you can add hold down clamps to make them a little less intimidating. Then I could adjust my reference blocks and repeat the process for the remaining cuts.
Next up were the mitered angles for the side struts. Now cutting these was a little tricky because of their placement and the size of the beam. So a track saw and a miter gauge were just the droids I was looking for. And since this maple stock is some thick material, I took the cut slow and made it through in two passes. Well, most of the way. Then I could again turn to my templates to mark out the location for the upper angles. These allow for the struts to rest flat against the wall, so they had to complement the bottom angle. And with those marked out, I could turn back to the track saw. So with all my angles cut, I used some Starbond CA glue to fill in any large knots. And if you'd like to try this stuff out, I have a link and discount code down in the description. Now I'm going to be cutting some really large dados in these beams. And I want to get them as close to finish now so I don't lose much material sanding them after the joinery is cut. So after using a card scraper and sanding the majority of the work pieces, I laid out the joinery for the four dedos. Here I'm setting up my plunge drawer to work with a template to flush cut the dedos. And I have to admit, I was a little concerned about messing up and having to remake these beams, but I pushed on. How often have you pushed yourself outside your comfort zone on a project? Let's have a conversation about it in the comments. So with my nerves wrangled, I could get to cutting. I cut them by taking two quarter inch deep passes to reach my final depth of a half inch. Yep, it doesn't get much better than that. And with one done, the confidence was back and I could cut the remaining three dados. I did have a few uneven areas left from the bit, but a sharp chisel made quick work of it. From there, I was on to laying out the mortises for my dominoes. Now I'm going to be using the largest dominoes that the DF500 can handle, which are about the size of this chocolate bar, but probably don't taste as good. From there I could plunge the mortises. Once the ends of all my slats were done, I cut the end cap pieces. I also offset these by 3 16 to create a more dramatic joint and add some visual interest. Anytime I can add small details like this to a piece, I go for it. While most people won't even notice it, those that do will really appreciate the extra effort. The last and possibly the trickiest section to cut was the backrest side strut connections. I laid a lot of this out off camera just because it took me a little figuring to see where I ultimately wanted the backrest to sit. So with all that worked out, I drove in some vertical plunges and cut the two mortises in each beam. Finally, it was time to drill the holes that will allow me to secure this bench to the wall. Now I don't have a drill guide, so I took a trick from a chair maker and used my bevel gauge to help me keep the drill bit in line. Once I had my holes drilled through this way, I flipped the beam over and drilled some 3 8 inch holes to conceal the screws and accept a few plugs.
I next gave all the pieces a final sanding and finished them up with a card scraper. All the edges were then rounded over with a plane and sanded to remove any rough spots. This is another one of those time consuming processes that make a world of difference in the final piece. Think of it as a 401k. The more you put in, the more you get out. From there it was on to the glue ups, which I did in sections before bringing everything together for the final assembly, and thankfully my wife gave me a hand with that part. Then it was time for those finishing touches, so I cut the plugs I mentioned earlier and prepped the piece for finish. The finish I'm using is a plant-based oil and wax blend. Penetrating oils are great since they're super easy to fix should the piece need repair. This piece turned out amazing. I love the simple nature of the design and the Japanese inspired look, and I always feel good pushing myself with each new project. If you enjoyed this build, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And if you want to see more sweet sawdust action, check out this video. I'll see you next time.